after game no, three? Do we watch and cast game three? We can watch and cast game three. I'm down for that. Okay. Interview before or after, you think? After. All right. Let, let, them, let them run it in. Knowing how long that our interviews go half the time. Fair. All right, so... I wasn't expecting to have to ask, if you're Crystal Dragons here, what do you mix up for Game 3? But here we are. YOLO comp. I wanna... I'm gonna see... I predict something absolutely off the wall. From, uh, from one or both teams? Uh, one... Crystal Dragons are going to have the weirdest comp. Charlie Scale's gonna do something a little different, but it's not going to be deeply... Uh, distinctive. I actually would have guessed the opposite. You've already won 2-0. That's, that's the fun day Monday of, of Here's the Storm. We've won the series <laughs> already, and Game 3 is time to fuck around. No. Yeah, whereas wrong, if man. I'm Surely We Scale, it's like, or uh, if I'm Crystal Dragons, it's like, come on, we gotta win this one. Let's, let's, you know... Waiting on you to join. What's the, what's the term? Uh... Buckle down, I guess, and then, uh, you know, make sure we can come out with our heads held high. Uh, looks like this map was probably picked by Crystal Dragons, and it is Tomb of the Spider Queen. This is... this could be great, though. I was concerned I was not going to have anybody to raid on over to, um... Although the Nexus match is happening right now, that got picked up between when I nice. last looked at uh, the calendar and now. Very nice. Always, always good. Kettle boil. Oh my goodness. What? what are we? BRB. Oh. Can't believe it. It is. That's. That's not a quick thing. Maybe it's just setting it up to boil. I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming that you live in the United States where it takes a month and a half for water to boil. Uh, even with an electric kettle. Yeah, that'll definitely take a good while. Um, do you have uh, an electric kettle, Ace? I'm wondering. I do not. Okay. I don't make tea or coffee or any hot beverage of the like. I, I have an electric kettle because uh, at one point I drank a lot of tea and I did it uh, in the office where we didn't have a hot water source, so I brought mm. my own. Still the fastest way to boil water in the U.S., even if it's not as fast as in the U.K. True. True. Yeah, I, I, U.K. has it down to an engineered science. Well done. If by engineered science you mean twice as high of a line voltage as we have in our outlets, I agree. That's why. <laughs> See, you could... In America, you could just plug in two. That would clearly work. Um, plug it into two sockets. This but is, we don't do that. This is where I put on my, uh, <laughs> my electrician hat and go, Actually, in the U.S., we do have a 220-volt system. We just don't use it in most of our appliances. Our wall outlets are only 120, but in your breaker box, there is a hot and a uh, anti-hot for plus and minus uh, about 115 to 120. So we do have, you know, the, the 220 volt ca capacity. We just don't use it for uh, small appliances. It's only the large appliances that get it. Well, there you go. The more you know, we're actually a 220 system, not a 110 system. Wow. That's crazy. So, uh, <laughs> so I, had to, I, I had to rant for a sec, sorry. No, that's fine. I just have no, I'm like, well, yeah, uh, the, where do I go from there? Oh, well, yeah, because normal, normally good conversation is, you know, comment on the previous point in a way that makes sense. Uh, there's no transition out of what I just said. And that's okay. Um, we are... 
attempting, we're still waiting for uh, Meme Zed to get back. Uh, so. All right. Ektar, name one hero that you think is going to get to be in this game. Uh, sorry, I have to respond to Twitch chat real fast. Uh, I, I did say hot and anti-hot because it's not like the minus 120 is cold being the opposite of hot. Um, but, yeah. And of course there are three phases. There's also the ground, but that's not... It's less relevant to the, the topic here. One hero what now? Way too invested in the American electrical distribution system. <laughs> Oh, good. We have a new co-commentator. <sighs> I don't know who it is, but I love it. It's the cat, because she wants attention and or food and or something she already has. Or she wants to go outside, but it's already dark, so she's not allowed out. Ah. That's my dog's favorite time to go out, because that's when the night creatures come out, and he likes to hunt those. She likes chasing bugs in the yard. We are counting down in the game. Uh, but she's not... She's an inside cat. She's not allowed to go out without supervision. And you only have regular vision at night. No supervision, so... It's not... She's not allowed to, uh... To just do whatever. Oh. Do you want to... Are you gonna be nice if you sit in my lap? I know you hate it. It's just terrible. You'd almost think this is a catastrophe. Uh, I mean, Crystal Dragons surely hope so. Continuing oh, with it? the Volibands. Uh, big fan, personally. Yeah. Get rid of those uh, highly effective auto attackers. Oh, Ace, and... try not to let me forget. I want to show off the uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen bug in this game. The locust? Yeah, the literal bug. Okay, cool. I will do my best to forget. Excellent. Jahana getting banned out. Uh, I would say this is not a surprise. Memes that has been playing a very proficient Johanna throughout this series. Yeah, uh, Blessed Shield shut down Kira a couple times, so this is, you know, it it was timely. It was everything that the team needed. It was good ban. Zul on Tomb of the Spider Queen also banned out. Okay, seems fine to me. I was going to say gonna... this is the first time Junkrat hasn't gotten banned out, and it gets picked up immediately. You go. Uh, I'm curious if we're gonna get that Artanis that was requested in chat. There's Stukov Varian. I mean, Good that, start. that's a combo as old as Varian at this point. Yeah, he, he, he did is. come out first. He did come out uh, second, rather, right? Yeah, Varian Stukov, was. Stukov came I'm first. Almost certain, because Varian was BlizzCon 20. Oh goodness, was it? 18? No, it had to be 17. It had to be BlizzCon 2017, because Deathwing was 19. Alex Straza Hanzo, I think, was 16, because I played that at BlizzCon, and 17 was Varian Rag, if I remember correctly. Okay. We do see not not the, the most uh, common combo, but Andu and Stitches is the most common Stitches pairing, almost certainly. No. I got it wrong, Ektar. Varian Ragnaros were 2016. Alex Straza Hanzo was 2017, and I should have remembered that because I have a picture of me topping healing and damage from the booths at BlizzCon. <laughs> um, and I have I had people in that game with me in the party, but I went to BlizzCon 2016 mostly by myself. So. And that's when Varian Rag was. Getting the Tychus band out, considering the Ooh. Thick Boy stitches, not a huge surprise. Uh, also, I think 
Uh, Nilsson Boy actually stealing away the Artanis from Ravenex. Uh, someone go ping Hoku in the NGS server. We got an Artanis game. Uh-oh. Real, because I am continuing down this train, this combo is as old as Stukov. It came out more recently in 2017. Really? All right. Yep. I remember are... being so confused when Stukov came out. Like, what is his kit compared to his representation in any game? I like what they came up with, though. It, it's really cool. It's a neat concept. Alrighty. That's a milk carton combo. Yeah, this is... This is uh, multiple layers of possible abduction coming out. You can go hook, hook. gorge, pull, portal. Light bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then it doesn't just, even matter because you're like just five just screens them. away. Yeah, you, they might be at your core, but they might still deal damage to that invulnerable core. Oh, it's a butcher on the back end of this. All oh, right, yeah. Man. Like, this really like is. Saying. This really did become a fun day Monday game real fast. Hey, this one. Uh, I was watching Baja today. The team with Randy Newman. Hell the yeah! Butcher. They they were running it over. They won cleanly. I'm a I big fan this of, the, of the Randalls. Heavy Greg. Yeah. So like I said, completely, uh, I wouldn't say completely unhinged comp coming out, but definitely I would say the crazier comp on the right side, but both of them are out of the ordinary. Yeah, if there are any hinges left, they are rusty and weak. <laughs> Alright, uh, Ace, throw up the prediction if you wouldn't mind. Are we predicting on this game too? Why, Let's why, go. why would we not? Because we didn't get any predictions last time. We got 10 channel points in the first game. All right. Okay. Very quickly. There's a locust. It always spawns. It spawned for like the last six years and then it dies. I haven't been able to figure out which side, it, which uh, team it spawns on. Sometimes it's on the red team and it times out. Sometimes it's on the blue team and it gets blown up by this tower, but it, it's existed there for fucking ages. Spawning on the right hand side in the orange trunks, they are Crystal Dragons looking to get a redemption game with Tacos Fuegos playing Butcher, Wista playing the Li Ming, Descartes on the Varian, Cat Astrophy on the uh, Stukov, and Nilsson Boy on the Hoku favorite Artanis. And on the left side of the map, when, with the series win, it is surely we scale with the hook, pull, and portal combo done by uh, Meme Z, Kagamine, Lin, and Raven X. Ulysses playing Junkrat and Leork, played by Moomin Rider. Lots of off rolls compared to what we saw uh, in the previous two games, which is understandable. Big ol' sausages, please. I actually just had a sausage that I ate throughout the course of this series, so big fan. Was it big and or old? Uh, it, w it wasn't actually either of those particularly. Mm. It was regularly sized and quite new. Okay, the the new part is quite important, I would say. <laughs> yeah, uh, Wista actually making the first rotation into bottom lane as Nielsen Boy a little bit slow. Moomin is uh, not only on an off roll, but taking a bunch of damage, but is able to spooky walk on out of there as Cat Astrophy did not get the uh, lurking arm out in time. But you're going to go ahead and find that spider meat is in fact tasty today, is going to try and stack on all these minion waves early. Um, I will say, compositionally, uh, surely we scale are in a great spot against Butcher Varian. With pull plus Medivh, you can mitigate a huge percentage of that damage coming in. That is absolutely true, and because there is a lane minion Varian here, uh, really not a whole lot of aggression that can come out for Crystal Dragons. Like, obviously Varian is good for making aggression happen eventually, but we're not at that eventually, and, uh, like, it's hard to get meat without any real engage. To be fair, that eventually is not that far off either, though. It is not the promised land of, like, level 16. It is just level 4. Ooh, Nilsson um, Boy is are. crushing the bottom lane right now. Swap kill? Almost. Oh, no. Swap Didn't go wasn't up. Attempt, though. I'm straight watching this lane. The other lanes are less interesting. Yeah, Leo has been bullied. Whoever's side they've been on uh, pretty much this entire set. Just dash out, does not connect, gets a globe. Huge offlane gaming. Yep. All right, we're going to tap. 
All right, uh, camp is gonna get picked up again eventually for the side of uh, Crystal Dragons. They they drafted. Of course, no. now it happens. We missed it. Come on. Uh, oh. Surely we scaled drafted for one thing, and it's not wave or camp clear. <laughs> it is in fact the <laughs> freshest meat. Surely we scale only want one thing, and it's fucking disgusting. <laughs> Meat that's been lying on the ground for upwards of 10 seconds. Yeah. Raw. Absolutely raw. It's fucking raw! <laughs> They're going for the stitches meat as well. There comes a protected, by the way, going to protect a lot of damage. Uh, I'll need to actually sit on the Medivh vision sometimes to see what those protects go for in terms of value because they will be quite, quite healthy. Great not finding a lot of uh, synergy out here between this two god variant. Just kind of, they're mostly just throwing out their buttons as individuals. Nice peel coming out from Descartes, but they don't get boot back in. I thought for sure Ulysses had that. Was there a something that stopped the boot from coming out? His brain. Oh, <laughs> that's no, mean. I, I, it's game three. It's Mon fun day Monday. No, I. <laughs> That, that genuinely may be the only thing, is it just missed it, and Ooh, that's okay. Damn. Anduin gets pulled. Nice. Oh, and the done. lurking arm goes for kill with the low blow there. First blood, uh, second blood, again for the Crystal Dragons. Yeah, and channel opportunity, importantly. Uh, lots of that is on the, the Artanis, to be fair. Um, but is it going to give the opportunity for the entire four man to turn in such as they have gems? And uh, with Leoric having been out for a while, I think Nilsson Boy could have found an opportunity to channel, but or to turn in, but opted not to. And did just opt for the damages here. It is Protector of Ire, Shield Battery, Final Cut, so all the damage all the time. And uh, Leo doesn't actually win this. Um, so Nilsson Boy just dealing a ton of damage. Of course, I'm not watching the meat uh, go down. There's a swap into the towers. Gaming has occurred. Nilsson boy, have you considered being an offlaner? Uh, I drop a spray there in like 100% <laughs> of games. <laughs> Nilsson boy more restrained than Ektar is. Yeah. I mean, it's the game three when we've already lost. You're yeah. like, come on, you. it's fine, right? Yeah, I, I would agree with you that it is the game three and it, you know, you take what you get. That was a fun one. And they're going to get an objective here. Uh, Dragon's going to pick up the first spiders of this map. Yeah. And uh, let's it's, see what they can get accomplished. It's not a huge lead, but it might be the biggest one that they've had so far. I think they... I think they had a higher lead whenever they would they found a pick in like game two or something on Zulin or game one. They I, found a Zool, I guess but, yeah. yeah they found they found Zul that one time. Yeah. Not quite getting the follow up on today. Cart means they are going to walk away. Butcher is here to make this a four v four. Uh, this is a pretty healthy oh. uh, Punisher going on to separate targets works out in this case as Tacos Fuegos finds the stun. Uh, that did not get pulled out and gonna get a nice extra chunk of that floor meat. Mid fort is going to survive, however, top is under threat. Floor meat, I'm dead. <laughs> I mean, I did mention it, but calling it floor meat is unbelievably funny. Yeah, that is going to be the first fort falling mid, and thought also took respectable chunks of damage here. Uh, really solid first objective phase coming largely off of the back of that mid lane kill. Alright, I will be certain of this now. This is definitely the largest lead Crystal Dragons have had so far. And of course, this will only encourage bad habits to play more Butcher comps. And I'm here for it. Butcher is going to be the meta hero of Division C. Uh, season 17, is this? It is not. Oh, 18. A lot of damage coming out for the side of uh, Crystal Dragons into this building. They do secure it. Movement Rider looking in to find maybe a uh, an Entomb play. Not getting the hook that I think that was uh, being looked for. That's a lot of abilities that I don't think quite got pressed in the order they were hoping for. Silence does not stop people from coming out of the... Uh, or getting into the thing, rather. And uh, Descartes has gone on a wild ride, but he is still coming in. Tacos Fuegos getting moved all over the place is going to be the next to fall, down to 107 meat, so reasonable. 
uh, Wister taking a truckload of damage. Somehow Descartes survived all of that, and more importantly, Bottom Fort was picked up by Nilsson. Yep, that's uh, the advantage of two offlane kills working in, but now uh, it is counter-offensive time with the blue spiders coming in here for Shirley We Scale. Uh, there's not a lot of good spider clear coming out here. We don't have amateur opponent. Butcher does not contribute except when left alone. So this will be a... This has a chance to get a lot of damage done. The advantage that the members oh. of... Uh... Oh! 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 Spray! 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 <laughs> Do it! Do it! Uh. Nilsson Boy, you have earned it! Am I crazy for saying Nilsson Boy should be MVP for his performance in this game, even if it doesn't count for anything? Oh my goodness. There's Hook into Gorge into... The, the taunt is big! The pull. pull! Nothing works out, and Raven X goes down on the Medivh. Did have that uh, Arcane Rift taken... Uh, care of not master's touch. I, I live in multiple years ago. Yeah. Uh, I gotta say, I am not overly impressed with the combo coming up from Shirley We Scale. The life bombs have not been landing with the uh, completion of Gorge as a kill gets picked up by the meme beam. Very nicely done. And a big push is gonna find a lot of damage. Moomin Rider gonna get bullied in bot lane once again. That was so. Artanis just picked up that kill one v four. He was being ganked and actively said no you. Yeah. So I mean, like, huge. This man's Artanis is as well. out of control. Yeah. Seriously, why haven't I seen anything from Hoku yet? There is an Artanis that is putting the team on his back. It's incredible. Spiders coming in again, third times charm for uh, for them with the. This one going on to the red side. There's the taunt into combo. Is going to pull onto the Junkrat. Medivh has 30 health. Might just get Butcher autoed to death. There is the nice light bomb combo. Does land for it, but the Junkrat does go down in the back. So despite the combo, still an even trade. It's an even trade, but it is not I meat hear. positive as the meat was on the <laughs> other side of the counter. The forbidden meat that could not be reached. I mean... Uh. Considering the source of all the meat, it should all be forbidden. We're just gonna look the other <laughs> way from from you know where we get it. Uh, Descartes is still sharking, even though they're down heroes right now. This is wild. Although Kagamine is pretty exposed, they engage onto Meme Zed. A big swap, however, from Nilsson Boy is gonna put the uh, the screws onto Anduin, and they are still able to walk away. There is some Rin on Rin violence in this game. Oh boy, Moomin Rider is going to get jumped on. Do we see the swap? Do we oh see it again? God. Oh, hell so of a spooky walk for just a little bit longer. This is the five dimensional mind games that have to occur as the offlaners come out. Gorge is up, so the portal is kind of looking to be placed. Butcher's back, so it is a clean 5v5. I think Memes had got uh, screwed by the portal actually spawning in front of him, and he right-clicked on it, because he was definitely stepping up to find a gorge and found a portal instead. Here comes the bush gank dive onto the Leork. Seems to be the main target. Does get taken out with the heroic strike. That's, That's two kills. That's enough meat. for the Butcher to finish me. He didn't uh, get both of them, though, I don't think. Oh, uh, let me... We're only, I can't we're see, at it's out of vision. Uh, I think he can pick up two minions. If there's just some location you could pick up two minions. If I'm Tacos, I'm running the hell away from this key because of how close that I am. He is going to be able to pick it up right here, though. There you go. So with that, 25% attack speed, 125 bonus damage. Now hitting for a ridiculous amount of 479 per auto at level 17. Yeah, if if you're Shirley We Scale, you feel awful right now. You've been losing the game all the time, and then Butcher finishes stacks, your opponents have exact turn in. Everything's coming up Millhouse right now. Uh, Shirley We Scale is more on that Shirley Hopin part right now, because it is not looking good. 222 stacks on the Protector of Ire out of the maximum of 9,001, of course. Checking the scaling potential for the side of SWS, uh, it's really 
just globes on stitches, who has not been in particularly uh, strong control of those globes. Anduin can scale a little bit, but hasn't been doing it particularly quickly thus far. Leo can scale up good power spikes, but uh, that's, that's actually on fair. all three on talents post, uh, post ult. Yeah, and he already went the, uh, what is it, Spectral Leech? So having the opportunity to scale up quite a bit, actually, um, I don't know how much it's going to matter just because he hasn't been able to auto-attack people. Ooh, I love that hook. Uh, do we get the timing? We do get the stun. Yeah. Uh, there was no way Descartes was ever surviving here, um, no matter what the rest of the team did, but this is going to probably be top keep going down. Uh, Raven X is looking for a very aggressive flank maneuver. Uh, I like the... Uh, the lambs coming out just to stop the uh, potential engage here. I don't know who actually survives out of this though. Memes that missing the hook is big. I think Wista doesn't survive anyway. There's just too much mobility. Tacos is uh -huh. trying to make me a liar though. Nilsson Bull is in boy is in there, and everyone survives except for the very early pick onto the variant. That is so surprising. Yep, they are, they are well and truly out of there with their two-level lead now. Down a player for just a minute, but I don't think it matters if Leo's up in the top lane. That doesn't do it. Artana Swap goes out and gets hit by a Junkrat Mine at uh, at its apex. So that is uh, a fun little interaction. Butcher gets free engaged in. Here comes the no portal. Portal was not good. Stun is good, though. Minus 10 armor is going to... Kill the Butcher. Varian's coming into the fight now to make it a 4v5. This might work out. Huge damage on a Moomin Rider from the Artanis uh, Triple Slash. Uh, Moomin Rider is low and Memezed is low, but no kills were found in counter. Yeah, actually, a, I feel like huge damage has been coming out from Nilsson. I need to check now. Uh, I went to the XP screen because that's what I tend to care more about. 62,000 for the Leeming, uh, Artanis 48k, and the Butcher only 18k. Uh, so actually not a ton of damage coming out from the Butcher, it's just the threat off of the stun that has really been seeming to do it. Plus, you know, the rest of the team doesn't hurt. It is. Butcher's damage is always ridiculously low and unreasonably focused. Like, all of that damage goes into kills. Yeah, none of it is flavor text damage. Ooh, we got a boss. very aggressive boss call coming out. I don't know if Shirley We Scale saw the rotations happening. Uh, Descartes is hanging around in vision on the, uh, the walls there, but it doesn't look like the members of SWS are going to try to make a defense up here. No, it surely doesn't, unless a Leyline Steel comes out. Oh my goodness, the way they almost didn't capture that for a little bit and gave Raven X, I was wandering, but it is not the case. Uh, boss is now going to be pushing onto an open core lane. Here comes a hook again, does not land. Uh, so this is, this is a tough defense because Butcher can just kind of click on the core and it's very effective. Uh, we get the lambs only finding out on the one that is going to give opportunity for the light bomb to stun as well, giving that little bit of shielding. Descart in a bit of a rough spot. Taco Swego gets put back in. Uh, the 20 is not finding a lot of purchase here for the side of uh, Crystal Dragons, but the swap is going to put them into a precarious spot that Kakamide fixes immediately. Yep, barely able to stay alive. This is a Razor's Edge defense here. For surely we scale big leaming orb lands into the back hitting two stitches goes down raven x goes down and that is a lot of damage butcher gets counter killed but this boss is still looking rather healthy for how unhealthy the person is. yeah that is the uh i don't want to call it a rubber match but the rebound game coming in for crystal dragons all right scouting people you better watch out <laughs> yeah butcher artanis it's gonna be big god that was that sure was something. That is some big damage coming out from Wista. Yeah, it's, uh, it's what you do when you plop a mage bef behind four people in front of him. Uh, yeah. Healing. That was, Once a, again, that was a fun one. Catastrophe. 
<laughs> that was... There's just solid play that game. I uh, I was really, really quite impressed with the offline. It was very clear. Um, yeah, I overall, don't, it's, it's got to feel good. I don't recall who played offlane for uh, Crystal Dragons in games one and two. Catastrophe. Okay. At least played the Leoric, if I remember correctly. I know the Leo is correct. I don't know about game two. Oh, played the Ragnaros. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and join a more public lobby so we can get a post-match interview. Sounds good. Wow, how'd you know we'd be here? Hi, hey folks. How's it going? Hey. Congratulations on your 2-1 victory in the the three-game series. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Your 2-1 domination. I know. Uh, game three was a little... Oh, uh, no. <laughs> we were like, we could do this, and then, like, sh starting off the shot calling, and like, hmm, this wave clear is a problem. Um, and we don't do anything until 10. <laughs> I mean, Stitches is reasonable for a tank, and Junkrat is good. Medea yeah, isn't. I don't but. know. I feel like we we've literally never played that before, so um. I don't want to say I can tell, but there were signs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the worst part was we spent earlier, like before our games today, like ten minutes trying to drill the timing on like Anduin stitches. Oh my on the god! Light bomb. <laughs> you always <laughs> have to wait longer than you think you do as the oh. Anduin. I'm I've I've had to do that. And every time it's like, okay, now, and I'm a quarter second early, and I feel awful, even if they still die. <laughs> you just like, oh. I think we got it once that game. So, you know, we take the little victories. I mean, you say you take the little victories when in actuality you take the mm. biggest victory in winning the first two games. Yeah, that was nice. That was our first domination this season. We've had, uh, I mean, you saw that last week, but we've I had did. issues with our game ones uh, and just warming up. So uh, it felt good today to have a to have a sense and to be like, okay, we did it. I made the very the bold prediction uh, after that match that I casted that like not not a prediction exactly, but I I told my my friends on the Papagos I actually wouldn't be surprised if y'all finish with a better record at the end of the season than they do, even though they won the match two zero. Yeah, that series was. I mean, we <laughs> we did a lot of navel gazing on that one of like looking back and like those games were so good. Um, I think I felt really that, I mean, it's not this series, but last series, but like as tank, like game one, especially I entered a lot or just made two aggressive plays. Um, so that was like frustrating for me, um, for today's games though, just those, like we had a sense, we did a fair bit of scouting. We knew they liked a lot of double support. So we like wanted to take them to a macro map and just be able to like use macro really effectively and just run them around and i feel like it worked uh pretty well in both games uh you definitely did that in in game number one uh we spent a lot of time talking about double healer because it it's there's some novelty to it in the year of our lord 2024 um and i mean it was definitely <laughs> go, it's, ahead, go ahead like big pictures it's a team fight style of composition and all track pass is decidedly not a team fight kind of map so it felt like your team kind of had a broad advantage in just you can clear minion waves and take camps quick and they couldn't and you didn't give up a lot of kills when that was their uh their advantage compositionally there was one like one of our deaths there we got to the point where like uh, both our side laners, like the Zul and the Zagara, and the Zagara did. Was it the Zag? No, the Zul definitely got ganked once, and I think the next it. game yeah. Zag got ganked once. And yes. both of those times, it was like making the call of like, oh, they're missing, and then just like two seconds too slow. Um, but it was definitely really spooky to play into that and be like, oh no, like they're looking somewhere. I, both of the side laners have the Jaws music playing. I think you all as well in that game one. 
especially had very favorable lane arrangements. If the enemy team had swapped the uh, Leoric into the Zul and the Uther into the Zagara, I do wonder if that would have gone better for them. But given the lane arrangements, you just kind of won both lanes and mid lane and took camps fast. Just everything kind of came up in your favor in game one. Just You just slowly won the game completely. It was, we were, we actually chatted about that a bit in draft of like, oh, well, what's the favorable lane matchup? And I was kind of surprised they didn't swap because we were like, oh, well, Zag sh should go into Leo and definitely pre-10, like it's free. Um, but I was surprised they didn't swap that. So that just kind of worked out in our favor. Mm. I did get spooked. They got our mid for it on that. Like they got the first OBJ and we were like, we knew they would probably take the first OBJ just because they can shove in as with the double healer and we can't really stop them. Um, and I think they got, they. I, I think they might've even knocked it down and I think I got killed or something. Or, and that was definitely, I was like, oh, that's a pain. And they had that mid for it up for ages after that, which was definitely feels bad. All right, moving on to game number two. Um, definitely a spicier kind of composition coming out from your opponents is this broadly something that you were expecting. I didn't have time to, to scout super hard, but uh, Ragnaros Kira is not a pairing you see often. I was kind of surprised they took both. We scouted and like we knew that they would either take double support or something that does like a lot of rundown. Like they played off lane Kira a ton, so we were kind of expecting that, but both of them was a bit of a surprise. Um and it definitely like the it felt much more back and forth on the shrines, uh, and their engage was very very frightening of just like having to watch out and not, uh, not really do a whole lot, just wait for them to press their buttons and then counter engage on it. Um, so it was definitely, and we knew like I was a little more scared on shrines because like I, I would have been more worried if they did double support to be honest because we could have still macroed, but we probably have it, never win a fight over Shrine if they double supported or we have to really draw out their cooldowns. Yeah, it was, I would say game two was definitely closer than game one just because there was a lot more potential in the, the comp. Yeah. Uh, and it, Or the map specifically. And at the start, like, we got our wires crossed a bit and, it, like, I think they killed someone or they invaded our camp early and we were sort of just, like, running around with geese, like, with our heads cut off and it was... That was spooky at the start, being like, ah, uh, they can't, they shouldn't have been able to. It was just poor communication on our part. With, um, but it was still definitely that start of that game was like, oh, this is not a good tempo. How can we fix this? All right. Uh, so the match was cool and all, but let's talk about game three, because this was probably oh, the most fun one from a spectator God. standpoint. I, I mean, <laughs> ask yeah do you have questions or what uh i mean so first off i think you're really cooking with the comp uh obviously anu and stitches is a classic pairing i think junkrat stitches is an underappreciated comp uh just because the chattering teeth can really help to set up stitches and make just make problems for the enemy team uh concussion mine is really strong as another button to follow up a gorge engage uh so i with the, I with, don't. I think the with, Medivh was kind of bonus. Yeah, with with hindsight, uh, where do you think the game three went wrong for y'all? I mean, I think there were two pro, two main problems. Was one of like me as shot caller not clearly identifying like how, and part of it's because we had never played the comp before, so like I don't actually know how you're meant to do your rotations. Um, and. And the other part was like they were able to successfully gank our offlaner several times, which put a lot of pressure on there and we lost gems. There was one point where we got kills, but uh, top, and then they killed the offlaner and that lost us like our gems to get turn. And so as a result, we, I think we only ever got one turn that game because we could, our wave clear just wasn't fast enough or we weren't using it properly is what it really was. Yeah, I, I definitely think that uh, Nilsson Boy should hang up the the animal skin and just play nothing but Artanis for the rest of the season because he kind of <laughs> yeah. crushed in bot lane. I didn't, I mean, that's the, like, I think our ta like, our Leo died once or twice. I, it just 1v1ing. Um, At least so, twice. It was like, something's going on down there. Like, um, there was a four-man rotation into bot lane and Nilsson Boy still got a kill. It was crazy. 
Oh, the, oh God. The, yeah, that gank attempt, I walked out to the bush to make the gank, and then I was like, wait, I don't have any cooldowns. What am I doing? And I've shown. And then he swapped, he like back swapped himself out of towers and still got a kill. I was just like, oh no. It's all gone so wrong. Yeah. Uh, and they, they got ahead pretty early before they even finished out on stacks. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I do think that the offlane kills are probably the like single biggest determining factor in that game. Uh, but even just like, you, I, there was also didn't... one or two moments where we trolled cooldowns. Like there was one moment when they were sieging our mid, where I think Junkrat like two cooldowns, like W and Pull, got used on the wrong hero, and our Junkrat died. I think oh. it was their first turn. Um, and so that like our main wave clear hero is dead, and we burned pull and W on nothing. That it was um, I think it was you got taunted and so you got pulled out. I think it was the stitches. I think uh, that's right. But the junk rat got hit with a, a long range leaming orb and then got butcher charged. Ah, uh, uh, that so that makes sense. Wasn't anything available to save uh to save that kill. Yeah, that meant it I was yeah. I think you were maybe trying to force it a little hard. Like it was usually like a portal forward with you stepping through to try to find somebody but they were doing a good job of stepping away from the portals as they were coming up i think maybe if you had just gone for a little bit more gorge and then portal back you might have found a little bit more value um, yeah and i do remember like there was one time i think where i just walked up and tried to take the, they were decent about like the variant taunted me to stop me going through portal um and then we didn't get the kill and i think people died um so if we run it again, which we'll definitely do, uh, <laughs> not actually, uh, but we'll definitely do it again for people scouting us. Uh, uh, yeah. A bit of ironing out might, well, a lot of ironing out might need to occur. Uh, small reminder for anyone who may be watching, but silences don't stop you from taking portals, so you can't throw down Lurking Arm to stop them from going through, because that would be balanced, I guess. That would be fair and balanced. Just take Malfurion into it. <laughs> or... Like a true Chad, take broccoli. I mean, if you if broccoli slaps them to death, they can't walk through <laughs> a portal. You're not wrong. Yeah, like yeah, flawless, flawless logic. Uh, mm. All right, that's uh, that's about it. I have for uh, like specific map stuff. Ace, do you have anything for our guest? No, I'm good. I thought that covered pretty much everything. All right, so we're gonna toss it on back to you, Memes, and for any shoutouts that you want to give. Just shout out to first is actually probably just to our sub lav for like coming on this week and then last week on short notice and just uh dropping to whatever role we throw him in and doing really really well uh second to the rest of the team like i'm really happy with how everyone played and third to crystal dragons like they're doing really well and it was a really fun set of matches and i guess fourth to you guys as casters i really appreciate the effort and time that you put in uh, and I hope your own seasons, if you're playing, are going really well and that you're having fun games. I am currently in the free agent pool looking for a subs position, but no one has reached out with a time availability that works for me. Ah, uh, damn. That's uh, Scheduling is the true final boss of so many things, but especially hot Steve. Yeah, uh, I got a new job recently, and it's a 980 schedule, so I don't get home most days until 6 p.m., and oh. half of NGS is already playing their matches by that time, so it, it just hasn't... I haven't found my, uh, my forever home yet. And that's tricky with work, too, because, like, you can't play, or at least I can't, you might be able to, but if I get home from work, I need, like, at least an hour to be in a good mental state. Yeah, for me, for me, it's, like, 30 minutes. Uh, nice. We, like, I was on an East Coast team before, and that was kind of fine. I could come in at 5.30 and play at 6. I can't get in at 6 and play at 6, which is why no. I'm casting matches that start at 6.30 if uh, <laughs> people hadn't noticed. I will continue the effort uh, to do the 6.30 matches. All right. Uh, thank you for coming on by. We really appreciate it. And uh, good luck in the rest of your season. Thank you so much. You guys have a great night. Bye. You as well. You too. All righty. That was... It wasn't the most fun series, but it was a fun three games.
That was that was a real hoot. The, fir- the first two games for were sure. were good, but game three really brought it back together. I'm glad we stuck around for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, I have our raid target established. I haven't actually verified that Raka is streaming, but she's signed she up to to cast, so I assume that she is. So she is. I am on her stream right now. Awesome. We're gonna get the raid sent out. Uh, I'm just gonna hit it now and then do uh do the closing statements. Ace, you go first. <laughs> 